welcome to what we're calling an EFL Hangout on uh, July 20th, 2011. This is Jeff Lebo in Busan, Korea. Delighted to be joined by Chu Peng. Hello, Chu. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. Uh, where in the world are you? Um, west of Africa. West of Africa. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm in Las Palmas in the Canary Islands. It's um, politically Spanish, but geographically more African. So, uh, like, like with the show uh, and, and the weather forecast in Spanish TV, we don't fit in, you know? They have Cause I, I saw your little bottom. pinpoint in the, your Google Plus map. I said, oh, what an interesting place in the world to be. How long have you lived there? <laughs> Ooh, close to 20 years. Uh, I've been here since 92. Since 92. Now, you are a very prolific producer of uh, language learning materials. Before we get to that, can you tell us a little bit about the path that led you to Las Palmas? Where did you start out and how did you wind up there? Um, I, I, well, I was born in Singapore. I was born in Singapore. I left Singapore in 77, uh, bounded for London. Uh, and I stayed in London till till 1990, more or less. Uh, when I left to do a little bit of traveling, and then I went back to London in '92, in 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 spring, I think, in April or something like that. And uh, and decided that I I couldn't live there anymore. I was looking for another place to live. And decided to come here. Uh, there was a girl involved somewhere along the line. <laughs> I wanted to know, like, why couldn't you live in London? And what was her name? And <laughs> but maybe that's not for a public webcast. That's for the uh, private edition. <laughs> um, what is your day job? My day job currently, I'm um, doing business. Teaching in-house business, teaching. Uh, I sort of go to the companies and and and, uh, and do my thing. How long have you done that? So this year, I started this year before I was in uh, in secondary schools. Uh, I decided for uh, decided to go for a change. What's the the cultural makeup of the Gran Canary Islands? Mainly Spanish. Mainly Spanish because the Spanish came here and 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 killed all the natives. I don't know a few years back. <laughs> uh, so it's, it's predominantly Spanish in the south of the island where it's more touristy. You get lots of depending on on the time of year. In winter you get lots of Scandinavians. In in the summer you get lots of Latins, uh, the, the Italians, the, the Spanish themselves, uh, the, uh, the the English, the British, or rather. And are, are there many Asian Las faces Pal walking around? In Las Palmas itself, well, you know there are Asians everywhere. <laughs> That's true. Uh, in Las Palmas, um, you get quite a lot of well. A few. You get a few Indians. The Indians are everywhere, right? Uh, the, I, I'm not sure how the Indians came to 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 Las Palmas. I'm not sure of the connection. But there's quite a community of Koreans. Eh? Eh, I think the connection is is probably to do with uh, with with the port. And there's a fishing community. And that's how it started, the, the Asian community. Uh, first the Koreans, then the Japanese came, and then the Chinese. And you know, once the Chinese come in, they take over everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is such an so interesting. So we have, and, uh, yeah, and also we have we have Africans, obviously, because of the proximity. Uh, we have lots of illegal immigrants. Hi, Benjamin. In, uh, we get a lot of uh, illegal immigrants. They they come on on a little boat. You know, they squeeze everything, everyone in there, in a little boat, they fit, I don't know, 20, 30 people, and, and they just row the boat across or hope for, for, the, for, for the current to bring them ashore here. So we get lots of Africans as well. 
Interesting. And d did you go there for just kind of travel reasons or love reasons or professional reasons? And why did you wind up staying for 20 years? You're trying to get to the bottom of it, aren't you? Well, well no details, just the headline. <laughs> it was love. Oh, it was love. I'm, I'm, yes. I'm, I'm married to her now. Uh, she's Spanish. And uh, I got married to her in 97. So uh, it took me five years before we, we took the plunge. Okay. And we have a, a we have a little boy. The little boy is not so little now. He's he's thirteen, so he's still little. So you're on this island of love. You're <laughs> a husband and a father, and you've got a day job. And somehow you manage to have three significant online sites, maybe more. Uh, I, I'm before we talk about them. How do you have any words of wisdom as far as time management? How do you do it all? How do I do it? They call me crazy. <laughs> they say I'm mad. How do I do it? With with a lot of difficulty, really. Uh, my wife uh, is threatening divorce. Uh, <laughs> uh, she said I love my computer more than her. Uh, so uh, it's it's a big problem. But somehow I I I, I manage. Uh, a few minutes here, a few minutes there. As a fellow geek, I understand that conversation. Um, Where's your so, wife? Uh, my, 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 my wife is there thinking, oh, I just got home and he's webcasting again? <laughs> <laughs> Which is why we have to wrap up within an hour because I need to have a little veranda time to talk to my wife before the next webcast. Uh, so why don't we get onto some of your awesome projects, starting with the one that I'm not sure how to pronounce. Uh, it ends with the word climb. How do you pronounce right. it? A uh, clill to climb. A clill to it's, climb. All right. Clill, uh, for those who are not familiar with it, is, is a, a system of teaching whereby uh, they teach a curricular subject in another language. So, for example, in Spain, in Spain they would teach uh, different subjects, for example, music, physical education, science, geography, what have you, in English. Not all the time, but uh, like maybe once a week, twice a week. So it's sort of a, a, a bilingual teaching in a state school, basically. Uh, and that I was involved in CLIL for like two years, so I decided to, st to start that, uh, um, that site because I found um, a lack of material for, for teachers and for students and that was how we got started and clearly obviously was a play on, on, on word play you know right how clearly. long has this been around this acronym <laughs> in this movement a, a long time yeah, I, I'm not sure how when it started but it's 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 the, the acronym started I don't know perhaps uh, in the 90s, I'm not sure. Don't don't, don't quote me. Uh, it's a popular uh, system in Europe, and uh, it's got uh, European funding, so that's probably add to its popularity. Okay, so you become familiar with this. You decide you want to produce a site with these kinds of materials. When did you start it? How did you approach it, and how has it evolved? I I started it about two years ago, uh, at the end of, of, of perhaps the first year of my involvement. What I found, uh, what I found was uh, uh, we, we didn't know what to do. You know, we didn't have enough material. It was like uh, the blind leading the blind. And I started it to share resources with other teachers resources and experiences. But what I found was that none of them was really interested. Uh, they were saying, yeah, that's a good idea, wow. But no one was prepared to dedicate after work time. You know, their time was their time. So I'm paid for 30 hours, or I'm paid for 20 hours, 20 hours, and that's it. Yeah. So um, I started removing them as collaborators and and, um, and and did it on my own. And so 
it went from from being a teacher sharing site to more like for teachers of my own school and students of my own school uh, and and uh, it grew from there so you are not the only person that produces content for this site sorry i, I hear nora complaining about the same thing <laughs> I, I don't know. Her husband. All right. Oh, oh yes. We, we, <laughs> I yeah. think there's a lot of us we, geeks that have that experience. Lot, yeah, we're heading towards a lot of cyber cyber divorces. <laughs> what I think we should do is oh, have sorry. a support group for the spouses of geeks so that they can connect right. with each other and commiserate. Yes, don't, just don't ask me to create a website. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so I'm okay. sorry, getting back and to so a quilt to climb. Yeah. So you are not the only person who produces content for this site? At the moment, yes, I am. You I, are. Uh, I am. Uh, uh, what I do, uh, the, the content is mine, basically. The ideas are mine. But what I may do is, for example, I, I do lots of games. But obviously, I uh, have no time, no the capability uh, to create games the way I want them. So I use other sites that offers these game, games for free, uh, again, uh, sites like uh, Class Tools, sites like Zondo, uh, uh, sites like uh, Purpose Games. I use them a lot. Uh, and some of them I can embed into the website, but others I can't. So I had I, I just produced a link, and the link will bring them to the other place where I have my games. Have you Has the site resulted in connecting with people who are like, Thank you so much. I have used these in my classes, and I want to help you build this collective resource of materials. Not as much as it should be. They use them, but they keep mum. Yeah. Well, twilltoclimb.blogspot.com. Check the show notes for the link. Check out the materials. Donate and help you build more resources. <laughs> Uh, yeah, moving along, <laughs> you've yeah. also got the, do I don't even know how to pronounce this one either, the Dogme Diaries? Dogma. Dogma. Why is it not A? Because uh, Dogma, I mean, I know this comes from, uh, was it Scott Thornsbury's article yeah, originally? Yeah, he, he, he started the, 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 the word, I guess, uh, because he took it after the Dogma movement, the Danish film movement. And I suppose the Danish pronounce it dogma. I don't know why it's called dogma. I, I, I read the Wikipedia page. It goes back to a movie, I think it referenced. But what, right. can you, what can you tell us about it? What does it refer to? Uh, it's basically, in fact, they're, they're trying to, we're trying to get, uh, steer away from, from the term dogma and, and move into what we call teaching on plug. But somehow uh, the dogma term just just gets stuck. It's it's, it's hard to remove uh, a label that that is stuck on your back, you know. Um, but basically, it's uh, teaching with uh, with little material, if, if any. Uh, you try to teach with what you have in your classroom. Uh, you use your students as your resources. You use the, the the class as your resource. Perhaps looked out the window. Perhaps look in in, in the student bag or, or their phones or you know whatever there is in the classroom. You try to take advantage of. Do you use this in your teaching? Yes, at the moment, yes. Um, not always, uh, not always strictly uh, dogma as such. I may bring in some material. Uh, I may bring in photos, for example. I may bring in listings. Uh, but uh, I have course books which I hardly use. Uh, I try to to um, get the students to read the lesson. So uh, uh, I could go in the class and I said, uh, "All right, how are you?" And that "How are you?" could lead into an hour of talking. Or what we what did you do yesterday? You know, or you had a meeting yesterday. Well, tell me about the meeting. Or 
or you have a conference next week. Okay, what is it about? You know. Do you think there's um, methodology to this, or like I, I can imagine some teachers doing that very easily. Other teachers, I think, that would not come naturally to. Um. Sure. For, 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 uh, with, with everything, it's, it's, uh, it's a bit of uh, personality involved, you know, uh, whether you're, you're confident enough. Uh, it's easy for some, it may not be easy for others. Uh, the, the thing about this method of, of teaching is, uh, all right, you can have a conversation in lessons, but the important thing is to monitor the language being used. Uh, it's important to be taking notes either mentally or, or, or physically uh, and to to, uh, to to try and and, and uh, recycle the, the language perhaps uh, at the end of the class uh, to explain certain things or, or to explain the, the following lesson uh, and, and to be listening all the time, to, 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 uh, it's not just free flow conversation, it's a bit like, like what we're doing now, uh, you direct uh, where you want me to go, uh, and it's a bit like that. All right, feel free to take the range yourself if you're uh, <laughs> bored with my questions. Um, so th this kind of teaching involves very little materials, uh, how do you go about uh, providing a website to support that. What was the vision for the uh, site? What is it? What it described the site? Well, the the the, the dogma diaries is basically more for my students uh, and for people who are interested uh, to know what what dogma is about. Uh, what I do basically is to analyze uh, the lesson. Um, what, uh, how it started, uh, what kind of language was used, what kind of problems they had, you know, uh, and, and, uh, and such things. How have your students responded to this method and how have they made use of the website? Uh, they, they find it very interesting uh, because, uh, bear in mind that, that uh, well, those that I've used at the moment, they are they are adults. Uh, they they have uh, they have, perhaps they have been studying English for a long time when they were younger. Perhaps they have gotten lots of of, of the grammar rules. Uh, if uh, one of them actually said, uh, if if you uh, if you were to teach me grammar, I I probably won't learn anything. Uh, but this way, uh, I'm I'm learning a lot, uh, because uh, he he'll be he'll be talking all the time. All right, he makes mistakes, sure, um, but without making mistakes, you never learn. And uh, and they find uh, the site useful because uh, obviously when they when they're talking, they don't know or they don't remember the things they've said or all the things I've said. Uh, so that's that's sort of a, a, a revision for them, uh, and and then I put links and so on uh, for extra material. So they find it extremely useful. This is a bit connected, but in the chat room, Nora asks, "Would you involve tech in dogma, or is it not considered material?" Yes, I use I use tech sometimes. Uh, at the moment, my, my classes are sort of uh, smallish classes and in their offices, so they are not tech equipped as such. But I do bring my uh, little netbook in and I use it for perhaps showing photos, uh, audio, videos, uh, that sort of thing. Sure, I, I use them. I'm not, I'm not uh, strictly dogmatician as such. All right. I just want to let the listeners know that we are going to open this Hangout up to the world, and everyone's going to be able to hang out with Chu and me. But first, I want to ask him about his, his final project, and one that I found very interesting. I was listening to as we were um, uh, waiting for Chu to show up. This is Exclusive Interviews with Cutting Edge Educators. Can you tell us a little bit about how this 
site was conceived and how it's evolved? Well, um, like I told you before, uh, this thing I met, and I probably am, about, about two months ago, I think less than two months, I think one and a half months ago, I decided that I needed a new challenge. I needed, uh, too much spare time? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, um, you know, I feel to climb well, has been going on for two years, and I needed something, something fresh, something different, something to get me involved with 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 uh, fellow teachers. Um, so um, it's sort of uh, I sort of thought it's uh, there are lots of people uh, out there. Perhaps I'm talking to them. Perhaps people like 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 Jeff, like like uh, like Brad, like like Nora, that I don't really know them. Um, so I I thought, well, perhaps I can I can I can do this. Let let me let me uh, write to Scott uh, and see whether he's willing to do it. And he said uh, surprisingly, he said yes. So I thought, ooh, um, well, I better start uh, writing a few more uh, emails out and, and make sure that I can carry this on. And and a lot of them said yes, and and even some volunteers said, look, I, I'm really uh, keen on this. Uh, count me in. I said, well, great. Uh, now I've got <laughs> I've got no way out. And that was how it started. Um, I wanted to ask you about the name. Uh, in the description, you said in it's called "I Ask You," I A S K U, uh, and you said you chose that name because all the good ones were taken. What did you want to call it? <laughs> something, uh, something more boring, something clearer, like uh, interviews or something. <laughs> and I wanted it short uh, uh, because I thought a clear to climb was too long. You know, and I think what I wanted was I interview or something. I interview. I think that's it. I interview. Uh, anything with I, obviously, is is uh, a no no. And and uh, and suddenly this uh, this brainwave uh, hit me and I said, I said, uh, what about I asked you? And it, and it looked it looked it looked uh, catchy. You know, it, it's like it's not I asked you. It could be yes, cool. Uh, so, uh, and some people have turned up to me and said, uh, uh, "Well, uh, I, I like the name. It's 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 a good name." So, there you are. I agree. It's 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 meaningful, but kind of vague and catchy. Uh, so, what have you learned from doing the interviews? What has the response from visitors been? Oh, it's I, I learned an awful lot of things. I think. Uh, of things, and and I hope that uh, so have my viewers. Uh, it's it's about trying to find out what make what makes these people tick. You know what what drives them on. What uh, like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, uh, all the teachers here that I know that I've worked with. They are not willing to to get more involved than necessary. They are, they are, they are, they have the class time and the class preparation time, and that is uh, that is a lot of work, too much work already for them. So, but these people, they they are they are connected uh, all the time. Uh, it seems like you know. And they're doing this, and they're doing that, and they're doing conferences, and they're doing webinars, and they're writing, and they're teaching. So, uh, what makes them think? What what drives them? What motivates them? And that was uh, that was what uh, I wanted to find out. How long have you been tuned into this Web 2.0 world of Twitter and Facebook friends and friends, people you know that you've never met? I started basically with a clear to climb. Uh, I've heard before that I've heard of these, you know, blogs, and I say, blogs, uh, uh, diaries, and I say, who would be writing diaries? I, I don't want people to know what I'm doing. Or, uh, and it's crazy. Uh, and then when I was looking around for a, a, a cheap and easy way of of, uh, of putting material online. Uh, of sharing things, uh, and I thought, well, uh, blogging is 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 a possibility. Uh, 
it took me five minutes to set it up and, 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 and you know it's free and it's great that was how I, I started. Twitter was the same thing. I said, oh, it's, it's crazy, you know, why, why would one, people want to know about things like I'm in a cafe, I'm drinking coffee and I'm talking to Jeff and, you know. Uh, so I wasn't tweeting much. I'm not sure when I actually got started. It's, it's, it's very recent, really. I got started uh, I, oh, I got more involved when I found, uh, when I discovered Twitter. Uh, Twitter was was unmanageable for me, and w when I found Twitter, I said, "Ah, this is something else." It allowed me more control. I could see direct messages. I could see even my Facebook uh, streaming, and, and things are more. Uh, it's streaming. It's not uh, like you know, uh, twenty more tweets. You know, twenty new tweets. You know, uh, so I became more involved. Yeah, I mean, I think that's important for Twitter and social network, social networking in general is filtering. You know, there's so much coming at us via Twitter, via Facebook, or whatever, that being able to pay attention to the stuff you want is very helpful. And and I think exactly. you know, this social networking world is so interesting where. We know people, we connect with people in such different ways than we did a decade, two decades ago. Um, and I, I think one of the reasons that I Ask You has really kind of uh, struck a nerve or been of, of, of great interest is you kind of take it a step further. And it's similar to what I'm hoping to do here as well, is you get to know a person a certain way via their tweets and their webinars or whatever, but you kind of take time to, to slow down and ask questions and give people a, a chance to ask more or to answer more completely. Yes, yes, that's, that's true. It, it, it's surprising uh, that uh, the interviewees are telling me uh, it's been great fun doing that. You know, they're enjoying it as much as I am. Perhaps it's more stressful for me than, than, than for them. And it's like in, in, in the old days when, when we were using phones, phones meaning landlines, uh, it's like you, you, you want to put a, a face uh, to, to the voice. And now it's, it's it's the reverse, you know. You you have your your, your Twitter accounts or Facebook, and you you have the face, but you don't have the the voice. So it's like putting the voice behind the face. Yeah, and I'm I'm a big fan of the live interaction. Which uh, speaking of which, I want to go ahead and open this hangout up. So what I'm going to do, uh, so far, just for people who are kind of interested in how these hangouts work, uh, I have only invited Chu and myself. Uh, and I'm in here twice, once speaking and once streaming. Uh, what I'm going to do now is, uh, first I'll, I'll share it with my EFL, uh, my EFL circle. So those are 76 people that I've uh, um, connected with via Google+. I will also share the link to this Hangout. Uh, while I'm doing that, Chu, I'm wondering if you can tell us a little bit about the Reform Symposium that's coming up and what you're doing there. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I think you, you, you would have found all that out in, in the interview with Shirley, uh, the woman who never sleeps. <laughs> uh, I do. I, I sleep a lot. Uh, well, a lot, I'd say. Anyway, uh, she had a way of uh, persuading people. You know, the first time she asked me, I said, uh, "No, I'm not sure about that. I, I don't think uh, I can do it." Uh, but she didn't say no, and she didn't say, "No, you have to do it." She just uh, sort of uh, subtly asked, uh, "Did I did I ask you before?" Um, if 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 I didn't well, uh, you know, I, I would like you to do it. And I'm sure uh, with that bright and smile the, and twinkling <laughs> eyes, how do you say no? Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so uh, I decided. Well, I had to move a bit further away from my comfort zone. I said yes. All right, I'll, I'll do it. And what am I go? What I'm going to do is is. 
uh, I'm not really sure yet. I title it uh, "Moving Away from," or, or, or I don't even remember the title. Something about uh, uh, moving away from the first dimension, or, or something like that. Uh, first, can you tell us what this is? What is the Reform Symposium for those who the, might not have heard about it? It's it's basically a webinar, but it's it's a global international conference. It's, it's a global online conference. Uh, reaching to over 80 countries, all, all over. It's, it's. Uh, uh, I was thinking of a, of a term for it. You know, it's like a webathon. You know, like marathon and hackathon. Uh, it, this is a, a, a conference that goes on. If you if if you think about the time differences, uh, we are. What is it? I'm. I'm. Um, it's two o'clock here. 10 and p.m. It's, here. It's like what? 10 p.m. Where, where, whereabouts are you? I'm in Korea. Ah, you're in Korea. Look, it's 10 p.m. Uh, your side, and in, in Australia, it's, it's another time. And in, in South Africa, you know, uh, something else. And so it, it's like every hour, every half an hour, uh, and uh, there is something going on. And not only that, there's like three or four rooms open at the same time. And you can go in from room to room. So if I'm talking and someone gets bored and they, well, they say, "Wow, well, this guy's talking, talking nonsense," uh, uh, I'll go to another room. And it goes on all the time. Uh, it, it started uh, a year ago or, or two years ago. This is only the third one. The first one, I'm not sure how much, how many people it attracted, but the second one attracted about four thousand uh, attendees. And Shelley expects eight thousand, and even that she thinks eight thousand. She is thought that was a modest sort of, estimate. Yeah, yeah. So it's really exciting. It's really exciting. And I just, I'm, I'm so in favor of this kind of professional development and and learning. I think it ha offers so many advantages. I mean, face to face conferences are nice because you can meet people face to face and you can drink together and whatever. But you know these online conferences are environmentally friendly. <laughs> you know, no one's burning fuel getting there. Uh, and right. like you were saying, it's much easier to kind of find your content and and uh, uh, hello, Mr. G. Want. Mr. G, welcome. Hello, uh, Jeff. Would you mind sending or, or making me join as uh, a biorama as well? Um, you got me on as Glass D, but not as a biorama. What I'm going to go ahead and do now is make this public, so anyone is going to see this, uh, and who knows, we may make some new friends. Uh, so if you go to my profile page on Google+, and I'll put that link in the chat room, uh, you should see that link. There it is. Now, I've got two computers running here, so you'll see me twice or hear me twice. I don't want to get an echo, so I'll probably turn off. Okay, one. so we're going to lose Mr. G, but we're going to gain Don. You're going to gain something. We'll make that trade. <laughs> and and just to everyone else listening in, I'm talking to you, John, Nora, guest 25080. Uh, we'd love to hang out with you. If, you're having, if you don't have Google+, let me know your Gmail address, and we will uh, send you an invite. Uh, everyone's welcome. We can talk about whatever we want. It is a hangout. Hello, John. Greetings. Hey, John. Uh, any, any, Don, um, I'm thinking it's time we, that Mr. G hang up. I'm thinking it's time we, that Mr. G hang up. He can click the exit button. I've done that. I'm waiting for it to close down now. In the meantime, I can mute Mr. G. But the noise. What I'm going to do, Don, is go ahead and mute you because we're getting all sorts of uh, background from you. Whenever you're ready to chime in, go ahead and unmute yourself. And Mr. G is gone. And I cannot unmute you. You have to unmute yourself. This is a Hangout feature. Are you there, Don? I think there's a red microphone you can click to unmute yourself.
Am I here? You are here. Wherever you are, you are here. So uh, let's quickly oh. now, Don. We're still getting audio. I'm wondering, a do you have a headset? Okay. What I've done is I've turned off the other microphone. For some reason that one's still running. And uh, oh, okay. Well, that would be why. It's but you're been, sounding fine now. EFL or... bridges. I've got the EFL bridges still open. Sometimes so I was getting it's a stream. from that, and it was looping through the other computer. Yep. Yeah. So anyway, uh, can you guys first uh, let us know where you are? And now I have no sound. Oh, that's a problem. Don, well, you're not going to hear us, but while you sort that out, I'm going to mute you again. Uh, and John, can you tell us where you are and any thoughts you had about what's been discussed so far? Are you still having problems with me? Not if it's yes? No, you're fine. We hear you. Do you hear us? <laughs> so anyway, John. Yes. <laughs> John in NZ. Where are you? I'm in Auckland. And did you do something different with your hair? You look different than the moo cast. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just uh, was playing tennis uh, earlier, so I... <laughs> I... I should mention, I know John from previous moo casts. Do you know what a moo is, Chu? No, no, what's that? This is another online phenomenon. Why don't you explain it, John? Uh, yeah, the best way to get into it is to, to just go to the Edu MOOC site. The... Let's see. This this is one. Oh no. <laughs> There's one. Uh, at the uh, University of Illinois Springfield has putting on a uh, massive open online course about online learning today and tomorrow. And 2,600 people signed up for it, and I think about 200 people put their actual contact details into the system. And maybe about 20 people are actively <laughs> contributing uh, to the discussions. Uh, but it's an interesting group, and uh, they've had uh, four weeks now, is it, Jeff? Yep, this of, is week four. Uh, uh, Topic discussions uh, with panelists, a, a weekly webinar. Uh, so you do get a little bit of that sort of interview, give and take kind of thing going on. But uh, uh, I think Jeff's has been organizing these uh, Moo Casts, uh, Edu Moo Casts, that uh, are uh, the, the sort of back channel conversation uh, for the uh, official. Uh, education uh, massive open online course that uh, the University of Illinois is putting on. Yeah, and we should mention a MOOC is massive online, open online course. And we should also mention, Don, you've got some seriously heavy fingers, man. We hear your keyboard tapping. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear us, Don? I'm going to go ahead and mute you again. Sorry, Don. Um, and MOOC started like in, I think the first official MOOC was 2008, and basically with these people who were just opening up courses to everyone in the world and um, getting thousands of people participating and seeing what happens. Sounds interesting. It is. There's a big one coming up, uh, I don't know when it starts, uh, I think September, uh, with Stephen Downs and George Siemens and Dave Cormier called Change. It's called a Change MOOC. Mm -hmm. So we're hanging out. Uh, any any questions I should have asked you, Chu? You're an expert questioner. What questions would you ask yourself if you were interviewing uh, yourself? Well, I'm I'm I've put on to a different hat. So the question is on coming out. Oh. I had a question about how you do the interviews. Um, I noticed a little bit of change in composition as things evolved. It looked like with the first one with Scott, you kind of just sent him some questions and he did a video and answered the uh, questions. 
Is that correct? And how do you do it now? Yes, that's 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 right. Uh, that was how it started. I uh, thought uh, when I when I started this, I thought uh, uh, it's better not to do uh, sort of uh, online interviewing, uh, primarily because uh, recording online wise is 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 not as good, and also uh, these people are extremely busy. Can you still hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay, yeah, um, that uh, it's it's more difficult to pin them down in 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 a certain time. The time difference as well is is a major problem. So I I decided to do it sort of offline. I I ask them the questions. I I send them the questions. They record them, and 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 then uh, somehow they get the video to me, or they upload it, or we do some editing, or or, or whatever. Uh, and that was how it started. And then uh, I thought that well, perhaps it's it's, uh, it's it's not fair. Well, no. Then I then I started editing myself. No, uh, Scott edited it himself. And then I started editing myself in in some cases. And then I decided well, perhaps it's not fair that they are doing all the talking and they don't. No one gets to to see me, nor nor hear me. I'm very comfortable uh, in my chair, in my in my uh, uh, boxer shorts. Uh, so, uh, so I thought, let me let me try it with uh, with chair because chair did it in such a way that uh, that made it easy for for me to to, to splice myself in, and it got uh, a fairly positive reaction. Uh, about Brett. Uh, Brett uh, got a bit more technical and said Brett, this should be, the spacing should be a bit longer and things. And so uh, slowly evolved from that. Uh, and also uh, it sort of gave me a chance to, to edit it uh, the way the way I, I saw it. Which do you prefer? I, I definitely like seeing you. Uh, All right, and is so, it because I, sorry? It's because it, I <laughs> sorry. You go. It's because I don't like seeing myself. Uh, I hate seeing myself. I hate hearing myself, and it was uh, a lot of effort on my part to 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 put myself in. And, I'm a big believer in the power of conversation. Uh, I mm -hmm. think, especially like a lot of the people you're interviewing are expert presenters, and they know how to take their topic, answer their question, and give their kind of prepared answer to a certain extent. So I think the more interaction is introduced, the better. Now, you still don't do them live, do you? Like you, do you, how do you work the video? Like do you record your questions and then send them to them, or? Is it actually happening in real time? Uh, no, I send them the questions. Uh, basically, I, I uh, investigate a little bit about about them. Obviously, I do a little research, uh, or I ask them to, to to send me some information so I could uh, structure my questions in a way uh, appropriate. No. Uh, and they they would uh, answer the questions. They may answer them all, or they may not. Uh, and then from from there, uh, they used to upload the their their videos, uh, and then I I'll take it down and I edit them. Uh, but now I'm hoping that they can send the videos directly to me. So that there is a, a, a minimal loss involved. Well, anytime you want to do an "I ask you live," I'll be glad to provide uh, tech support. Uh, All right. Speaking of tech support, I wanted to check in with John and Don. John, I muted you because we were getting uh, keyboard noise. So please feel free to unmute yourself. And Don, feel free to do the same uh, if you're hearing us. Are you hearing us, Don? which is Korean for hello. 
John, we're not hearing you. I, I'm okay. uh, <laughs> um, typing on a very quiet keyboard. I'm, I'd be very surprised if it was uh, my keyboard. Maybe, maybe you were falsely accused. I'm typing what? now. Can... Wow. You must have been drumming. Not me. No, sorry. Falsely accused. So sorry. Uh, speaking of drumming, I was looking at your Facebook photos, uh, Chu, and it looks like uh, I saw this this little Chu on the yeah. drums. <laughs> right. I, I used to be a drummer. Used to? Yes. Uh, well, I haven't. Hey, once you're a drummer, uh, you're always a drummer. Probably, probably. I still have my my old drumsticks, uh, in uh, stuck in a wardrobe somewhere. Mm, and uh, I would love to 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 have a, a chance to 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 bang it out sometime. You know, with these hangouts, you could do you know global gl jam sessions. How? You, we all play together. <laughs> right. I suppose I could bang on the keyboard. But well, we all get our. And actually, there's a, a, a what is her name? I forget her name. She's uh, becoming the internet's newest star. She used a hangout to do a concert, and she just started playing and invited people in. And someone said, "Oh, I'll stream it." And so now she's this Google Plus sensation. Her next concert is tomorrow, uh, okay. and she's uh, she's riding the wave. That's I just posted this virtual choir link, which was each of the different parts sang their piece, and then the guy video assembled them all. Yeah, if you had good enough connections, there's not that much delay. Uh, we'd, ha we'd have to try that out. But that'd be cool to jam globally. Mm. Yeah. Do you play anything, John? Yes, I'm both a keyboard player and I sing in a gospel choir. All right. I have absolutely no musical talent whatsoever, so I'm going to be on maybe the tambourine. All right. Well, what I want to go ahead and do is uh, wrap up this official video and audio. Uh, we'll stay on for a, a post show, uh, but so I have a clean piece of video and audio to upload. Uh, Chu, thank you very much for taking, t for sitting in the other chair for a while and answering my questions. And thanks for all the great content you have produced. We'll certainly look forward to staying tuned. All right. Thank, thanks for inviting me. And thanks to, to Brad as well for insisting that, that uh, I accepted the invitation. Yes, I'm going to keep him around as a nag in chief. He's going to just harass people <laughs> until they're willing to show up. Uh, speaking of which, uh, we're going to be back next week with another EFL Hangout with one of the founding fathers of EFL Bridges. This is the current rebirth of EFL Bridges. Uh, but EFL Bridges actually started in 2006. Uh, and Graham Stanley was one of the first people to really uh, do some webcasting here. And he had a world conversation club. Uh, during one of them, uh, MC Hammer stopped by. And he was, Graham did an awesome job talking to people from all over the world. Uh, so we'll be catching up with Graham on what he's been doing since his uh, MC Hammer webcast. In any event, thanks again, Chu. Uh, we'll see you all next week. And if you want to stay tuned for another webcast, uh, we'll be doing the MOOCcast in 39 minutes. All right.